What is going on, everybody? It is Out the Box MTG. Here to do what we do best, get magic cards out the box. So what we have here is a Zendikar Rising set booster box, the very first set booster box. And without further action required before opening the box, instead of saying further ado, we gotta change it up a little bit. Let's get this box open. I was gonna say this bad boy, but I don't know if that sounds, if that sounds right. Yes, we have our expedition again. Just I don't I don't like how they put this plastic all over it, but I guess it makes it safe instead of sticking in the corner like they had before. But uh it looks intact. Alrighty, let's get this box open. And let's find some good cards. If I can stop knocking into the camera. Alright. We are here, our packs are here, you guys can see them, let's get started. It's a little bit different already. So we have our Soul Shatter art card, Foil Mountain, moving right along. That's odd. Squad Commander and a Foil Grow Tag, and of course our list card spent, or where our list card would have been. You know, it's starting to, starting to seem like if you did get a list card, you're probably not going to want to see it. Oh, look at that. We got a expedition art, but it also has a nick in the corner. I'm not going to worry about pulling the floor. It's, as you know, when we put a common or an uncommon aside, and that is what we would call our Mythic Uncommons, for sure. The art cards are gorgeous, but they literally are all bent. That is insane. Ugh, how frustrating. Scoot Swarm, there we go. That's what we're looking for. Is that a, uh, okay, no, we haven't opened a Legion Angel yet. A Legion Angel and a Dauntless Unity. But yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm like... I'm gonna get the set booster and the set booster card, not the set, the, the limited, like, the list, the list card, and it's gonna be bent. And that's gonna make me very sad. No Priest of Oblivion and a Foil Sleep Sea Floor Stalker. But yeah, like, why? Why does every corner have to be bent like that? That's so ghetto. Ugh. It's frustrating, and I'm glad they changed the boxes, but it's just like some of these first sets were so good. So it makes you sad that you don't get to uh, enjoy it the way you should. Swarm Shambler, a Resolute Strike, and a Drift of Phantoms. But, of course, it literally has... And the problem is, and I'm not trying to be, you know, anal about it, but the problem is you can't play these in sleeves when they're basically marked like that. So it literally, it's, it's like a death sentence for the card, which is absolutely just terrible. So, you know, do with that information what you will, but it's frustrating when, you know, one of the biggest appeals. Ooh, look at that Omnath, look at that Omnath. Absolutely gorgeous. We got the Omnath Locus of Creation in the showcase for our first Mythic. A Rabid Bite and a Plated Geopede from the original Zendikar, which still has that bend. That is, ugh. Like, see, you're going to get some really good set booster cards like we did in the uh, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, and it's going to be a, like an herbal, like it was. And when you have it bent or really destroyed, before you get a chance to even have the card. File F. Foil Marfolk Wind Robber. What is the list? Apparently just a place where you get cards that are bent. And see, it makes you wonder, why are all these cards bent? Like, was the machine just that rough when it packed the cards? Because like every one of these cards 
has been damaged. And that, ooh, ruin crab. And that is a, pro ooh, Needle Verge Pathway. See, Pathways, in my opinion, are the best lands printed since Shock Lands. You know, that might be debatable for some people. Um, now, of course, the Triomes were, were really good. But I personally prefer the Pathways. I'd say at least they went above and beyond to make sure your expedition wasn't destroyed. Tazri for our second mythic and a scarecrow, which again is absolutely damaged uh, for our rare set uh, list card. So, I mean, at this point, you know, if I pulled a mystical tutor, um, I don't know. I don't know. I guess there's no point in, you know, crying over spilt milk because they stopped making these, uh, ooh, ooh, baby, hello, hello, hello. And it's not bent, guys. It's not bent. We got the Terminate list card. Now, I know what you may be thinking. Out of the box. Why does that matter? It's like a $20 card. It's kind of sweet. Anyway, that actually makes my entire night better. That makes my entire night better that the list card wasn't absolutely destroyed. Because I got a case of Zendikar Rising coming, and I don't want... Oh, ooh, ooh, baby. Ooh, the best one. There's your volcanic island right there. Lava Glide Pathway, River Glide Pathway, and the full art. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, and a foil rare, Orin Reef Ooze. But yeah, um, insane, insane. Now, one thing I do want to ask you guys, actually, I kind of like the commentary more than just reading, you know, magic cards. You know, obviously, you know, I'll comment on some things, you know, if I feel, oh, this really needs to be commented on. Um, but I more like a commentary when opening the packs. I feel like you guys get to see more action. I, you know, am not making you watch a 45 minute video and, you know, we can get to the good stuff. But that being said, guys, um, what do you prefer? Do you prefer the longer, more drawn out explanations? Oh, another room crap. Or do you prefer Yasharn and a foil fissure wizard? Do you guys prefer the long drawn out uh, on basically where we kind of review each card or would you just prefer ooh, swamp would you just prefer that we kind of stick to that in its own topic to where we just kind of review I guess standard or limited formats as they come out instead of I suppose harping on the older cards. Ooh, Aga Team's Awakening. Yes! We're getting all the hits in this box, guys. That just means our expedition's terrible. Let's find out. <laughs> We're doing it early. We're doing it early. Let's me got the trusty scissors. Let's make sure we don't cut our expedition open. That'd be some good TV though, wouldn't it? Alright, did it did we actually get it to where it could come out? Yeah, I think we did. I think we did. Yep, yep, yep. Here we go, here we go. We got the Prismatic Vista. Hello, hello, gorgeous. Okay, okay. Go ahead and sleeve you up, actually. Not bad, not bad for our first expedition hit. I'll take it. You know, it could have been worse. So, there you go. Not bad for expeditions. All right, all right, all right. Valakut Awakening, that's a rare hit. Ooh, and the Ever-Flowing Chalice. You know, honestly, it's the tokens that are coming more bit. Like, I mean, some of the uh, the list cards definitely are getting bit, but, you know, it seems like, I guess if it's a better list card, generally it, it comes pretty pristine, which is, I don't know how to feel about that, but, yeah. So, do with that information what you will. So far, we've hit the River Glide Pathway and the Full Art. We've hit the Scoot Swarm. We've hit the Valakut Awakening. Now all that's left to hit is 
the Lotus Cobra and the Seagate Restoration, and we'll be there. Ooh, Foil Archon of Emeria. We'll be there, so. There you go, guys. Welcome to Zendikar Rising. I uh, I personally uh, believe highly in this set, mainly because you do get an expedition in every box, which is absolutely insane. And the fact they've held values. So Bailey, Bailey get recovery. There's your four dollar uncommon right there. And then it's Luminar Aspirant. That's that's a banger of a pack. And then it's hold, that's held its value so well, especially you know with modern uh, Horizons too. Basically, you know, reprinting all the fetches. Which thanks, thankfully the uh, onslaught slash cons of Tarkir fetches haven't been reprinted yet, so that helps. Double rare pack, so that helps that those uh, haven't been reprinted. I think we've gotten three mythics so far in this box. A little light on mythics, not gonna lie. A little light on mythics, but that's okay. Bellet our retreat. That's a good rare to get. Um. But yeah, so you heard it here first, folks. I would definitely, I mean, and re and really, I, I hate to say it, because I like common because, you know, of course we have the Chase Rare and Baseju, but um, it's not it's not hitting on as much as these other sets are, especially these sets that are close to rotation, but they were just, there are some very, very commander-heavy playable stuff in these these new sets so that's that's something that's ooh, turn timber symbiosis man we're getting the mythic hits we haven't gotten any of the garbage so i was watching uh some older uh videos tonight you know check it out the competition but i was watching some older videos tonight and um oh look at that celestial colonnade and the signature card um, I was checking out some older videos and people were like, oh man, this mythic, that mythic, this mythic, that mythic. Splicer skill from Modern Horizons in our list card. But they were like, check out, check out this mythic, check out this mythic. And you know, the, uh, the one mythic that I, I personally believe in, and if I see it, I'll show you guys. It's the black mythic. I can't quite. Oh, clear water pathway and a foil. Oh, and we got a card. In the... We got a list card in the back. Merc water pathway. Boom, but a boom. Clear water pathway. Foil. No priest of oblivion. Absolutely gorgeous. And a Gorm the Great. A battle bond list rare. But yeah, um, where are we at? Uh, train of thought. Train of thought. It's the scourge of the sky clays. Is what I'm thinking about. And that car is bananas. You want to talk about like uh you think about um um see I, I don't play as much modern. Okay, think Death Shadow and think how you want to lose life, and it's generally a, a pretty fast pick. J Smear Mage. There we go, we got the planeswalker. Utility knife and a midnight. Okay, our list cards have actually been really good here. Um but if you think about it, Scourge of the Sky Claves will go really, I mean, I, th I think it's already being played in that deck, but it would go, ooh, pretty island. But it would go really well in that deck, in my opinion, to, uh, ooh, Thieving Skydiver. But it would go really well in that deck. So that is my Sleeper Mythic that you can currently pick up for just under $2, I believe, is Scourge of the Sky Claves. So you heard it here first, folks. That is my professional tip to you guys. And I would, uh, you know, not saying take heed, but I'm just saying take some heed. Because that is not a bad uh, choice for you up and coming magic folk. So, get you a play set while you can. Archpriest of Bayona and a foil in a Harry's binding. Alright guys, we have two packs left. We are feeling pretty good about our box topper. We've gotten, for the most part, the mythics we needed in the set. We got Omnath. We got uh, Agadine. Very good. The Scourge of the Sky Claves. Here you go. Like I said, guys, this is what you're looking for. All right, I'm going to read it off to you. It's Star Star, two and a black. Or one and one and a black. Kicker, four and a black. When you cast a spell, if it was K, each player loses half their life rounded up. Okay. 
So if you're behind, I mean, you're getting right back into it. Scourge of the Skyclave's power and toughness are each equal to 20 minus the highest life total among players. So, he just gets back. <sighs> double Mythic pack. Triple rare pack. Triple rare pack. Double Mythic. Amirius call and Scourge of the Skyclaves. Look at that. Only on Out the Box MTG do we really get out the box. Absolutely fantastic. And a Blood Reckoning foil. All right, guys. We are wrapping things up here with our last pack. Wrapping things on up. Wrapping it up. Here we go. We got the token. Another River Glide Pathway, because why not? Absolutely incredible, guys. Pathways, double rare, maddening cacophony. No list card, but that's fine. Absolutely an insane box. Bravo is in the car rising. Bravo. Gloves off to you. Enjoy, guys. Thank you for tuning in to Out the Box MTG.